In this first example, we are going to develop a state space representation of this mass spring damper system. This system is relatively simple. We have two masses, mass M1 and mass M2. A force U of T is applied to mass M1. We have here two springs, two dampers. The displacement of mass M1 will be called P of T and mass M2 will be called Q of T. So the first step in this process is to create the dynamic model for this system. So we're going to split that into a set of two equations, one equation for M1, one equation for M2, the same way we did in lecture two. So let's start with mass M1. For mass M1, we know that the sum of all forces applied to it is equal to mass M1 times its acceleration, that is P double dot. What are these forces? We have U of T, we have negative K1 times P minus Q, displacement of mass 1 minus displacement of mass 2, minus B1 times P dot minus Q dot. And these are all the forces. This is equal to M1 P double dot. Now that we have these expressions, we can keep the variable P on one side and the variable Q on the other side. So let's rearrange this equation starting here. We have M1 times P double dot, and I'll move all P's to that side. So here we have K1 times P, which becomes now plus K1 times P. We have negative B1 times P dot, which on the other side becomes plus B1 times P dot. And now we can keep all Q's on this side of the equation. This is equal to U of T plus K1 times Q and plus B1 times Q dot. So this is the first equation. Now let's move on to mass M2. For mass M2, we have the same principle, sum of all forces equals to M2 times its acceleration, which in this case is Q double dot. What are the forces acting here? We have the spring force, so that is Q, K1 times P minus Q. We have plus B1 times P dot minus Q dot. And we have two negative forces, negative K2 times Q and negative B2 times Q dot, and this is equal to M2 Q double dot, right? So the process of, cr of creating these equations from the free body diagrams are all explained in lecture two. Here we can do the same, and I'll keep all Q's on this side of the equation and P's on the other side of the equation. So we're starting there. So we're starting here, we have M2 times Q double dot, plus what multiplies now Q dot, we have B1 and B2, so plus Q dot times B1 plus B2. What now multiplies Q directly? We have K1 times Q, K2 times Q. They are both negative. When they move to that side of the equation, they become positive. So plus Q times K1 plus K2. And this is now equal to all P's that are left on this side of the equation. What P's we have here? We have K1 times P plus B1 times P dot. And this is now the second equation for mass M2. Now that the equations of motions are done, we can move on to the second step. We can now define our state variables and then rewrite these expressions as a function of these state variables. For this particular example, we have a set of two second order equations. To write these equations into a state space form, we'll need each of them to be written as two first order differential equations. This means that we'll need four state variables. Which are these state variables? There are multiple answers to this question, but a good first attempt is to look at the system and see which elements can store energy. In this way, we can predict the future behavior of the system given the current state and given the current input. For this particular system, we can choose the masses, displacement, and speed. The reason is that each mass can store kinetic energy, 
which is dependent on the speed of each mass, and all these spring elements can store potential energy, which depends on the displacement of each spring. So we can now assign our state of variables as the position and the displacement of each mass. We can, for example, say that the first state, x1, is p of t. And the second state, x2, is q of t. We now need their derivatives. So we can call x3 p dot of t, which is equal to x1 dot. And we can say that x4 is q dot, which is the same as x2 dot. So these are our state variables that you can represent in a vector format as x, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Now that we have defined the state variables, we can go back here and rewrite these equations as a function of the state variable. So let's start with equation 1. Equation 1 as a function of the state variables becomes m1 times p double dot. Now which variable is best to describe p double dot? Remember that we want to keep this as a first order differential equation. So we could write p double dot as x1 double dot, but then we go to a second order differential equation, or we can take the second derivative of p through differentiating x3. So x3 dot is the same as p double dot, which is what you need here for the acceleration, plus b1. Now we have p dot. Which variable best describes p dot? Here we have the option of having x1 dot or x3. So remember that we are always going to the lowest derivative, so the better choice here is x3 plus k1 times p, which is x1, there is no other choice there, equals to u of t, that is our input, it doesn't change, plus k1 times q, q is x2, and plus b1 times q dot, and q dot is x4. So this is the first equation as a function of these state variables. We can also now isolate for x3 dot here. Remember that we'll need this later to put this in a matrix format. We'll need expressions for the derivative of each state variable. So here we have x1 dot and x2 dot. From this equation, we can get x3 dot. So x3 dot is simply... 1 over m1 times u of t plus k1 over m1 times x2 plus b1 over m1 times x4 minus b1 over m1 times x3 minus k1 over m1 times x1. Very well, now let's move on to equation 2. For equation 2, we can also use the state variables here. So we have m2 times q double dot. So which variable do we take for q double dot? That is x4 dot plus k1 plus k2 times q, which is x2. There is no other choice plus b1 plus b2 times q dot, q dot is x4, q dot is x4, and this is equal to k1 times p, p is x1 plus b1 times p dot, p dot is defined here as x3. And in the same way that we isolated for x3 dot, let's do this for x4 dot. And x4 dot is going to be k1 over m2 x1 plus b1 over m2 
x3. Now moving these two terms to the other side of the equation, they become negative k1 plus k2 over m2 times x2 and negative b1 plus b2 over m2 x4. And here we have now the expression for x4 dot. Very well, now that you have all the expressions, we have the expressions for each state, and you have the expressions for each derivative of those states. We can now proceed to writing this in a matrix form. And in this matrix form, we are looking at an expression in the form of x dot equals to a times x plus b times u, where u in the, is the input, x is the state, x dot is the derivative of the state, and a and b are matrices that we need to determine. What are here the size of matrices A and B? Well, because X is a 1 by 4, then A will be a 4 by 4 matrix, B will be a 4 by 1. Okay, now that I have all the expressions here, we are going to attempt to write this in the format of X dot equals to X times A plus B times U. So let's start with x dot. x dot is simply the derivative of x, and we defined x previously as x1, x2, x3, x4. So the derivative of a vector is a element-wise operation, so this becomes x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, and x4 dot. And this is now equal to a matrix, so this is a 1 by 4, so we have a 4 by 4 here, times x itself, so x1, x2, x3, x4, plus b, times u. u is the input to the system, and b is a vector that we are going to need to, that we are going to determine. So now the question is, what elements do we have in this matrix here? So this is again our x dot, this is the matrix A, this is the matrix X, this is the matrix B, and this is the vector or the scalar U. So now you need to inspect these equations and see how to fill out this 4 by 4 matrix. Let's start with x1 dot. Remember that if you multiply these matrices out, we should get back to these 4 equations. So to get back to the first equation here, that, how do we get x1 dot equals to x3? x1 dot is on this side of the equation. So to get x3 here, we need 0, 0, 1, 0. So when you multiply this, 0 times x1, 0 times x2, 1 times x3, and 0 times x4, this results in x3. Is u part of x1 dot? No. So the element in B here is 0. So we have plus 0 times u of t. Now you guessed for x2 dot, it's only x4. So that is 0, 0, 0, 1. And here we also have 0 because there is no u of t showing there. Now x3 is a bit more complicated. We need to inspect this entire equation. For x1, the element that goes here is the element that multiplies x1. So that is negative k1 over m1. The second element is the element that multiplies x2, which is k1 over m2. The third element multiplies x3, negative b1 over m1. And the last element here that multiplies x4 is plus b1 over m1. Now notice that when you multiply this row with that entire column, we get this part of the expression here. We still have 1 over m1 times u of t. So the element here that multiplies u of t is 1 over m1. Now let's look at the last row. We have x1 times k1 m1. So this element here, this cell, multiplies x1. So this is k1 over m2. The second element is k1 plus k2 divided by m2, negative, that multiplies x2. So this is 
k1 plus k2 over m2. Right, this is negative. Third element is b1 over m2. And the last element is b1 plus b2 over m2. So again, when you take the last row here and multiply with that a column, we get this entire expression. Notice that here we don't have any u showing this part of the equation, so this now becomes zero. If we now multiply these matrices out, we go back here to this set of equations. All right, so half of our job is done. Now we need an expression for the output of the system. What is the output of our system? Well, we can define anything as the output, but the output is the displacement of mass M1, that is P of T. If the output of the system is chosen to be P of T, then what is P of T? P of T is defined as a function of our state variables, S, X1. So P of T, is basically x1. We now need to write another set of expressions like this one, but now we're looking for an expression for the output that is y equals to c times x plus d times u. y is the output, y is c times x, x is this column vector, so c is a row vector, so this times x, plus d times u, d here times u. So this is now our matrix, or our vector c, this is vector d. So what it goes inside there? We are attempting to recreate this expression. So y, which is the output, is simply p of t, uh, defined as the, displace of, the displacement of mass m1, which we called x1. So now x, remember, is this entire vector. So the first cell here multiplies x1. So the first cell must be 1, and all other cells are 0. So when you multiply this out, we get y equals to x1. Notice that the, there is no direct relation between u and p. There is no expressions where these two are related. Here, this is the expression for the output. It's simply y equals to x1. So what goes in here? Here, we only have zeros. All right, so the matrix D is simply all zeros. And here we have the two set of equations that are described the behavior of this system as a function of first order differential equations. And this is the state space model for this particular mass spring damper system.